mind blown. And I'm Red Moon. And if you're like us, you've most likely seen Russians if you're familiar with Melanie Martinez. She has a few Russian-inspired tattoos, and she cited them to be one of her favorite vintage toys to collect. Although most notably, in her music video for her song Mad Hatter, four Rushton characters can be seen. They aren't exact replicas, but you can definitely see the resemblance. Rushtons were also seen on the cover of Melanie's 2016 EP Crybaby Extra Clutter, as well as posing as pen pals in her lyric video for her song Playdate. You could have also discovered Rushtons through TikTok, Instagram, Pinterest, or YouTube, since they're popular due to their mix of vintage, pastel, and kitschy aesthetic. That's the first time I'm saying kitschy. Is that how you say it? I don't I know. I think so, I think. Personally, we discovered Rushtons through Melanie Martinez, but then recently became interested in them after we kept getting Rushton restoration videos on our For You page. And now we're here making a video about Rushtons because once we start researching something, mm -hmm. I think, oh my god, wouldn't other people want to know about this? So now we're compiling everything we researched into this video. Yes, um, before we begin, we just wanted to give a huge shout out to all the wonderful Rushton creators out there. We pulled a lot of images, videos, and facts from because as you'll find out, Rushtons are horribly documented online and it's really hard to find official facts about them. It really is. So we really had to go off the community, so shout out to all these wonderful creators. More specifically, we'd love to give a shout out to Cute Queen, otherwise known as Cute Kitsch on Instagram. She's dedicated a lot of her time into making a Rushton website that's just a treasure trove of Rushton information. Mm -hmm. So if you're interested in Rushtons, after watching our video, feel free to check out her YouTube, her Instagram, and her website because she's honestly such a great resource. So with all that being said, let's, let's get, get into it. it. To begin, we have to ask the question, what are the origins of Rushton rubber face toys? Well, Rushton rubber face toys were originally created by Mary Rushton in the early 1950s. Growing up, she always loved dolls, and when she got older, she would often make little dolls for the girls living in her neighborhood. She then later grew up and studied arts until she eventually stepped into the doll business. She then married her husband, William Wright Rushton, and changed her name from Mary Waterman Phillips to Mary Rushton, and thus the Rushton Company was born. They began selling Moafra dolls, which were large, soft body dolls that originally retailed for 50 cents to a dollar each. Wow, imagine getting a doll for 50 cents nowadays. Ooh, I, I wish. wish. I really wish. <laughs> Anyways, Mary and William eventually had a daughter named White Rushton who grew up to help create and design a lot of the company's products. Although the Moafield dolls were very popular, they soon created Rushton Star Creations, which is what they are most known for now, and are probably the reason you're watching this video. Now that the basic history is out of the way, let's move on to talking about the Rushton toys themselves. Rushtons were rubber face plush that came in many different sizes and many different animals and people which we'll go over in a minute. Anyway, a lot of Russians featured hand-painted faces, and for some reason, a majority of Russians have blue eyes and blue eyeshadow. It's kind of like their signature style, although not all of them followed the trend. Their faces are also known to be very expressive and are said to be more high quality and detailed when compared to other rubber face toys from the period. Yes, a lot of other companies made rubber face toys, such as Gund and Knickerbocker, but we're not talking about them. That's all the shout out they're getting in this video. Cut. Russian span from the 50s to around the late 70s, so there are some differences between them throughout the years. The older Russians apparently have denser stuffing as compared to the newer ones from the 70s, which are softer and occasionally have beans inside them. I've also seen a few collectors say the newer ones went down in quality as compared to the older ones later, where like they use cheaper fur and fabrics. Right. I'm not really sure on that though, because no. I've never owned one before, so take everything we say in this video with a grain of salt. Yes. Most Russians are very expensive on the resale market because they are kids' toys from the 50s. A lot of them got destroyed by small children throughout the years, or you know, just got lost to time. They're over 50 years old. Yeah, even if you happen to find one, they'll most likely be in pretty questionable condition. A large part of the Russian community focuses on restoration. Um, um, <laughs> I mean, Russian restoration. Sorry, we just had to make that yeah. pun. It was, it was too easy. It was, it was too, too easy. easy. I'm sorry. <laughs> They're also terribly documented online, and we only know about the existence of most Russians by referring to old ads and catalogs, as well as sold listings on eBay and other resale websites. The information is it's very- scarce. It's scarce. So scarce. The Russian community has recently been keeping track of them on blogs and websites, but due to their age, they are very hard to keep track of. Some of them don't even have official names, so you'll see a lot of listings like Russian cat doll rubber face from, um, I don't really know, but some like 1950s Russian rubber face black chubby tubby bear. Also, a lot of older plush don't have years written on their tags, which makes them even harder to date, so if you find one not documented online already, good luck trying to date them. I mean, you can date them, like go ahead and take them out on a nice dinner, maybe you can ask their age politely after a few walks on the beach, <laughs> I don't know. But um, anyways, yeah. a lot of their ads do actually have dates on them, but also a lot of them don't. Yes, um, you can refer to the Russian website we mentioned before because they have a general timeline of 
kind of how you could make a Russian plus three found one, but again, it's wishy washy. It's all pieced together, and some of it is a lot of guesswork, so it's very hard to date Russians. Yes. I mean, you can date them, but it's hard to date them. <laughs> yes. Like we mentioned, a lot of Russians are seen in old vintage ads, but certain ones seem to be lost to obscurity, such as this worm. The gorilla next to it in the ad does exist, and we know people own it, but the worm, as far as we know, no one owns them. Okay, here's an example of another lost Russian. This black bear named Chubby Tubby was recognized as the number one toy of the year in 1952. You can find him very often online. He's not very rare. But due to his success, Russian came out with a spin-off line called Chubby Tubby Cherubs, which were a line of smaller colorful bears with wings. You can find the black and brown ones pretty easily, but the blue one was not known to exist for a long time until this blogger named Gigi Dolls found one online on a mysterious website. I don't know why most Russian collectors keep the website where they buy Russians a total secret, but now we know it exists because of this blogger. And you know, sometimes Russian plushies will just pop up out of thin air like this Russian astronaut boy. There is zero evidence of his existence online or in any old ads or catalogs, but he does have a Russian tag and has a similar face and hand mold to this Russian football boy. Honestly, being a Russian collector is like being an archaeologist. <laughs> is the Wild West. This seller is convinced that this plush is one of a kind and you can just feel the pain and suffering they went through like trying to figure out who the fuck he is in their eBay description. So let's read it. Russian star creation, screen astronaut, space cadet, very rare. So rare, in fact, that my name is my extensive research, I cannot find this doll anywhere. I've looked at hundreds, yes, hundreds of Russian dolls throughout the internet. I've looked at catalogs, listings of Russian dolls. I've even talked to a few Russian collectors and they have not seen this one before. Oh my god. I feel, bad for stressing out. I feel bad for them. I feel bad for them. Like we said, information on them is very hard to find. And if you're a Russian collector and know anything about this doll, let us know because that's just great. That's all the information that person has and we have mm -hmm. about him. But this is what's so alluring about Russians to me. Like, they're such a popular brand back in the day, but they're so horribly documented online. Like, even though they came out in the 1950s, new ones drop all the time. Like, new <laughs> Russian just dropped. It's from 1965. Like, what do you mean? Like, what, what do you mean? mean? <laughs> also, you might be wondering, are are there Russian prototypes? Yes, there are, but you know, they're kind of hard to legitimize or not, you know, yeah. with all the little information there is we, out there. We don't even know if the official ones are actually like real, <laughs> real or exist. So um, there might be prototypes, yeah. honestly. It's kind of like Monster High, how even though Monster High is a pretty popular brand, sometimes it's hard to verify if prototypes are legit or not. Like in the case of our Monster High video, we talked about a prototype Jackson that people were We could about. not verify. So yeah. verifying prototypes in any like toy brand is hard, but especially with Russians. Yes. Like we said, Russian star creations ran for around 50 years and they made a metric fuck ton of toys. A lot. And we're about to tell you about every, every single, single one, one of them right, right now. Getting at every single one of them. That would actually be impossible. But we are going to try highlighting all of the categories of plush they've made throughout the years. So, so let's, let's go. go. The most popular Russian plush are the bunnies, which were often made for Easter, but not always. Every collector has at least one bunny in their collection. Much like real life bunnies, Russian bunnies seem to multiply. There's a ton of different ones out there. There's sleeping bunnies, smiling bunnies, art bunnies, big bunnies, clown bunnies, keeping an eye out for Selena bunnies, floating with you from across the bar bunnies, killed someone and got away with it bunnies, swinked out on caffeine bunnies, monopoly man bunnies, and a bunny that has a face which I can only describe as pure contempt, longing for something more than this mortal realm that it's stuck in. For some reason, most of the bunnies have reddish pink eyes and they commonly come in many different pastel colors. This one seems to be the most common in my research and I can see why, it's cute. The bunnies also had variations that were sold in much larger sizes when compared to other Russian animals. These bunnies can cost anywhere between 300 to 400 or even a thousand dollars. Next, Russian-made bears. These Russians are also very popular and are most commonly knocked off by other toy companies. There are happy bears, big bears, baby bears, crying baby bears, large crying bears, and more crying bears. I don't know who in the exec room said, kids need, need their, their toys, toys to, to cry, cry, but they kind of ate. They look pretty cool. They do. Then we got Chubby Tubby along with the cherubs, amongst other bears like this one with a strangely human looking face, and this cute Valentine's bear. Whoa, look at this cute family of bears, and this bear who knows a guy who knows a guy. Oh, and how can I forget the panda bears? There's a crap ton of bears for my research. The happy bears are the ones knocked off the most, but no one can exactly replicate their cool vibes. Okay, onto the birds. This category includes chicks, ducks, geese, roosters, and owls. The birds come in yellow, white, pink, and blue, and most of them have blue eyes and honestly, pioneered. 
the duck page. Some of my favorites include Little Girl Trapped in a Duck Costume, Just Got Put in Time Out Goose, and of course these two yellow ones and this owl, which are the most well known. Next, Russian made cows and bulls. I personally really love the look of the cows. They all have sassy and adorable faces. I especially like the realistically colored cows. I can imagine them being like a decoration at Texas Roadhouse for some reason. Oh yeah, and we got sleepy cows too. And I know this category said bulls and cows, but I think Russians only made one bull. Besides making big bulls, they made small mice in mouse. They came in many different colors like red, white, pink, yellow, brown, and TV host who just got interrupted during his monologue and is holding back snapping at the audience members at expense of his good reputation. He's cute and comes in pink and yellow. And of course, like any other toy brand, they also made dogs. For my research, dogs have the most variation, not just with their face molds, but also their plush bodies. Their small puppies and their many variations. Big dogs laying down, big dogs laying down that come with a small dog laying down, dogs that look like a precious moments figure, dog you'd see in one of those sad SPCA commercials, randomly realistic basset hounds, as well as many, many, many more. Now when it rains dogs, it also has to rain cats, Russian made quite a few cats in various colors and sizes. We got smiling cats, cats on two legs, cats on all fours, sad ass SPCA crying cats, sleepy cats, cats that look drunk out of their minds, and Valentine's Day cats. Oh, and how could I forget pissin' pants? I mean pussin' boots. Look, I genuinely think most Russians yeah. are cute. But you gotta admit, Puss in Boots is a scary motherfucker. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if I saw him in real life, I think I'd piss, piss my, my pants. pants. Like, actually. First, because he's scary. And second, because he's worth around $600. Oh my god. And he looks like he just found out that information himself. He looks shook. He does. <laughs> now, you can't make cats without making rats, aka rodents. Now, let's start off with my favorite, skunks. Why do they look so flirty? This one's even winking at me. A majority of them have sassy side glances, and I kind of love it. Aww. They remind me of Pepe Le Pew from the Looney Tunes. I really don't know why so many creators give skunks a flirty vibe. I really don't know. Anyway, the skunks- No, are those are the Russians you can take out on dates. <laughs> You're so right. <ready. laughs> You can date these guys. Yeah, they're ready. Can. They're ready. They're, they're ready, <laughs> they're ready they, they look like tender. They look like they're gonna take you out in yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Um, the skunks are relatively cheap online, in Russian standards, anyways. Besides this Valentine's Day one. Aw, he's so cute. Okay! <laughs> Enough looking at the cute ones. Behold this! Squirrel? Chipmunk? I'm not really sure, but I don't know why Russians kept using this shocked expression in all of their plushes. I don't know what kid wants a toy that's perpetually shocked, but to each their own. There are a few squirrels slash chipmunks. I mean, this one's name is Chippy, so he's gotta be a chipmunk, right? Anyways, Russian made a few raccoons also. These two are definitely giving raccoon, but these two kind of look like someone's mom in a raccoon costume. I mean, I love them, but they are giving more person than wild animal. Speaking of wild animals, Russian also made foxes, and I love these. Especially this orange one, I know I keep making fun of the ones with extreme facial expressions, but it just works on the foxes. Almost all of them have their mouth open and tongue sticking out, and it, it just works. Of course, they just had to make one wink and make one Valentine's Day themed. The orange one, which I mentioned that I love, is from the 70s, which would make you think it's easier to find, but no. I haven't found any sold listings of this one. The only one I've seen sold on eBay at all recently is this darker orange fox, which is from the 50s. I have no idea why the older fox is easier to find than the newer fox, but if you're a Russian collector and you know the answer to that question, let, let us, us know, know in the comments below. Oh yeah, you can also buy a Russian fox's severed head for $400. Okay, I'm just kidding. It's a hand puppet, and I had no idea they made hand puppets. I also have no idea why his name is Ugly Ugly, but- Oh, actually, I just found some ads for the hand puppets. That's very interesting. I, I, I don't know why I didn't expect them to make hand puppets. Imagine being named Ugly Ugly. <laughs> I mean, that's your middle name, so. No, <laughs> that's your first name. Ugly, 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 moon, ugly. Oh, well, you're ugly, ugly, blue, ugly, ugly, moon. <laughs> <laughs> you're about to look ugly. Oh, well, you're already Next is my favorite category, sea life. In my opinion, the sea life category contains some of the most creative, while well, simultaneously weirdest looking Russians I've ever seen. From our research, the sea life Russians also tend to be the most expensive and hard to find Russians out there. This category includes this striped fish named Goldie Fish, who on average sells for about $1,200. Yeah, holy shit. <laughs> Next we have Bubbles the Whale, who's honestly one of my favorites too, but too bad for me. For my research, I've seen zero sold or active listings of this thing, meaning he's probably even more expensive than Goldie Fish. 
Next we have Omar the Octopus. From my knowledge, he came in blue, green, and red, and the only listing I've found of him is actually active right now, so if you have $495 to spare, go and grab him. Before we go over the other four, I want to mention that Goldifish, Bubbles the Whale, and Omar the Octopus were actually made in collaboration with a place called Marineland, which makes total sense. When else would you have the urge to buy this octopus? I bet a kid back in the day begged their parents for one at Marineland. Okay, lastly, we got this Sailor Man disguised as a turtle, a normal frog, and a really cute manatee. Only two collectors are known to have this one, and I just, I love him so much. He'd be such a holy grail for me. And oh my god, this is the silliest Russian I've ever seen. It is so cute. He's perfection. 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 Like, what is he though? Is he a whale? A seal? I don't, I don't know. know. I don't think the world will ever know because he's not documented in any ads. He's cute. But he's big cheeks. I, I think he's. I think he's. A, I think he's a seal. Okay. I mean, he's, he's, he's cute. So he's cute. super cute. Does he have a hat? <laughs> yes. I love it. He's a bit I love it. Okay, now on to the hoofed animals. This category includes donkeys, deers, and ponies, which all collectively look like they share one brain cell, except this donkey who looks like he absolutely has none left. Next, we have lambs and goats, which all have a pretty standard but classic Russian look to them. Oh, and lastly, we have pigs, who all look like they're in the midst of processing some really traumatizing information. Like this pig that looks like he was on a roller coaster and just realized his seatbelt came unbuckled right before a big drop. He's definitely pissing his pants right now, and if he's not, pissing pants is on the ride next to him. <laughs> Scaring the shit out of him. Imagine being stuck in a roller coaster with pissing pants. I jump out on the top. Yeah. <laughs> uh, mm, no, no, no. no. Now onto the miscellaneous flash round. There are lions and tigers, which are very similar looking. There are monkeys, which on average are some of the cheapest Russians you can buy. Well, unless they're the Valentine's Day themed or clown themed ones. Russian also made an elephant, a hippo, and the infamous Seymour the Serpent, which again, we don't know if they actually made. Okay, we're finally Ooh. done. Oh, just kidding! We're on to the humans next. Ooh. Yeah, Rushton made humans, and if you thought some of the animals looked scary, just wait till you see some of these humans. Most Russian collectors I've seen only collect Russian animals because some of the humans are just unhinged. Well, first we got baby, baby and bunny costume, girl in dress, clown, group of grandmas, mother goose characters, Tony the monkey man, hobo the monkey man, and lastly, Denim Tramp. <laughs> yeah, they made a hobo doll for kids and named him Denim Tramp. They made a lot of hobo dolls, and I think that's so strange. They got another one called Bogo the Hobo. Maybe the marketing strategy was, let's make children feel like they need to give these stuffed animals a home. Kind of like the Little Miss No Name doll. She was made to always be crying and look vaguely homeless, so kids would want to cheer her up and like take her home. I don't know why this was a popular thing to do back in the day. I really don't know. Anyway, fun fact about the Mother Goose characters, Jill was used in a pilot episode of the show Family Affairs as a little kid's toy which was then used as a base for a Miss Beasley doll, another popular vintage toy. Comparing them, you can definitely see the resemblance. We know this because we actually found the original Miss Beasley doll at the thrift store last semester, and she kind of scared us. She scared us a lot. We have nothing else to add. No, she's just fucking scary. <laughs> Rushton has also done collabs like when they made this Coca-Cola Santa. I heard Coca-Cola came to Rushton and specifically wanted them to make their iconic Santa into a plush. The cereal mascots, Snack Crackle and Pop, also personally commissioned the Rushton company for a collab. I know, right? Crazy. Oh, and so did E.T. E.T. has a mouth, right? Where the fuck is his mouth? Why does it look like the fur that's like on his face is a mask covering his mouth? On top of that, Russian also made Elf, Snowman, and Humpty Dumpty. I'm tired. These faces are starting to look normal to me. My only question is, did Humpty Dumpty always have hair? Okay, we are finally done. We tried to highlight as many Russians as we could, but of course we couldn't highlight them all, so if we missed one of your favorites, feel free to let us know down in the comments. Oh yeah, and Russian also made a ton of non-rubber face plush that we didn't list in this video, so if you want a deeper dive into Russian history, make sure you check out Cute Kitchen's website down that we'll, we'll link down here. We'll yes, link it down shout here. out to her if you want to deep dive more into Russians. When the toys originally came out, they cost between 3 to $10, and you know, now 
nowadays. It's just a little, a little different. different. Um, you can find them on sites like eBay and Etsy from anywhere between twenty to you know two thousand dollars. Yeah, although the real average for a singular Russian is around two hundred to four hundred dollars. But if you're really lucky, you can find them out in the wild while thrifting, antiquing, or by going to estate sales. And who knows, maybe your great grandma has a never before seen Russian hidden in her attic. And if she does, share with the class. Come on, send me a pic. Send a pic. Okay, if you're a Russian fan and you made it this far into our video, thank you so much for thank watching you. and being patient with us as you watch us roast part of your collection. I generally think Russians are really cool and I can see the appeal. I love seeing them pop up on my Instagram, my TikTok, and I'm gonna keep watching the videos when they come up. Yeah, because toy history is just so fascinating it to really me. Is. But to be honest, when I think about the idea of owning a Russian myself, I, I, they kind of scare me. Like, they do. Confession, they kind of scare me. And confession, we have Multiple a fear. Multiple confessions. Yeah, we have a fear of like mascot costumes. So, like, think mascots at Disney that walk around you can take pictures with. I'm like Mickey scared. Mouse? Yeah, I'm scared of mascots. And first, I think that fear translates into Russians because they have a rubber face. It's basically like they're wearing a mask. And something about that freaks me out. Like, what's behind the mask? Like, we made a few jokes that it's like, oh, this mouse looks like a kid dressed up in a costume. Mm -hmm. And I think it's because they have a rubber mask. It yeah. feels like. That there's someone hidden behind there. Like, I know there's just stuffing in there, but it's also the idea that the toys are so old, like, it's just like, it's weird. It's like there's 50 year old stuffing in there, and when you take off the mask, it's just gonna be a black hole full of like old stuff. Like, like, it just freaks, freaks me out. And like, I'm a dog collector. I'm a dog collector. I have dolls watch me when I yeah. sleep, and the Russians just creep me out. Who like, knows? Maybe my opinion would change if I owned one. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I've seen TikToks of like Russians. I've seen comments of people being like, I want my soul to be stored in one of those when I die. <laughs> and like, I can see the appeal of that, you know? Like, I'm kind of like, scared when I own a Russian that someone's soul will be stored yeah, in there. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I don't think I personally want to mm -hmm. own one. But if you're a Russian collector, make sure you comment on this video and let us know which one is your favorite Russian and which mm -hmm. Russian would you want your soul to be stored in? I kind of like, I think my favorite the whale. Yeah. Almost the whale. And I really like the seal looking thing. I it's do. just so cute. I do like that one. And honestly, I'm scared of pissing pants, but he's kind of iconic. I would love to put him like by my front door to like welcome visitors. Yeah. Into my house. <laughs> Fuck a guard dog. Piss pants, pants right no, in front of your door. No one's gonna rob your house. No, put him right in your window facing outside. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching this video. And if you made it this far and you like us, make sure to check out our two TikToks, our Instagram, our Macari, and um, our eBay account. And we have a Patreon where you can support us and watch behind the scenes videos and extra content and more. Yes. Anyways, just remember to dream is to expand your imagination and to create a reality. Anything. I messed up our thing. Okay. Wait, let's do it, okay? Wait, let's do it again. <laughs> Close your eyes, let's do it. Okay. <laughs> and just remember, remember to do this to expand your imagination and to create a new reality. Anything's possible, anything's not to make sense. It's hot and you're not sweating, I'm dying. Okay. See you in our next video. <laughs>